you know, if you look at this diagrammatic chart of scaphoid non-union, you realize that uh, we may not always be talking about the same uh, entity. There may be a proximal pole, there may be waste fractures with arthritis uh, or without arthritis. There may be uh, uh, fracture non-unions with uh, problematic arth arthritis or carpal instability. Diego Fernandez, who's in Switzerland, came up with a very nice approach to think about these things. And one thing we just touched on is a fibrous non-union. And when it's stable, without deformity, without collapse, these have an excellent prognosis and grafting is not always necessary. And if grafting is considered, it's not necessary to be structural. Once you start having a, a larger defect or mobile non-union, even those that may have a, a, a pseudarthrosis, uh, these um, may have an instability pattern and uh, anterior grafting may be able to not only reduce the um, malalignment, but also provide a structural or non-structural graft as we'll touch upon. Once you start getting this position as Dr. Blazer showed, we start having more problematic and uh, we have to start thinking about the age and the symptoms with carpal uh, uh, arthritis developing. And as was touched on, and uh, Kyle Bakel will talk about this more, is, is there a need for a revascularization trial for some of these very proximal pole avascular situations? I'll try to stay with the non-vascularized grafts, and Kyle will talk about vascularized and other alternatives uh, for this. So let's look at the waist fracture and, uh, level. It's a uh, well-aligned CT scan and no cystic changes. And this uh, really is um, well handled with a, a non-structural graft. This is a young man with a typical presentation six months after an injury and pain and limited motion in his wrist and his x-rays showed exactly what Dr. Blazer was showing, uh, uh, where there's a suggestion of avascularity or radio density, but rarely are these truly avascular. And you can see on the CT, there's a little bit of a, a dorsal osteophyte, but the alignment uh, is reasonably uh, within the normal limits and another CT view. And so this is approach through a dorsal uh, incision and not only identifying the non-union, but uh, decorticating uh, with a small drill or K wires on both sides to induce osteogenesis from the bones themselves. And I, I've never believed in this punctate bleeding situation uh, per se. Uh, and then packing this with cancellous graft. Uh, and you realize that this is a three-dimensional deformity so you can get a lot of graft in and it will fill very nicely all the surfaces of the uh, uh, non-union. And then a, a headless screw placed and here's your picture. And notice uh, uh, the uh, radio density early on, and but it does heal. There's a little radiolucency around the screw distally, but a, a functional outcome. We've also realized that treating a, a deformed non-union with a humpback can be done also without structural graft. And this is a, an article from Dar Mark Cohn and colleagues in the journal Hand Surgery. I found that if you take a small syringe and take out the plunger and put in your cancellous distal radius graft and then compress it, you can then come out with a fairly compact compressed cancellous graft. And as illustrated in this case, the realignment is done and a very stable headless screw is placed. And this graft is filling the entire surface uh, of the uh, deformity. Once you start getting cystic changes and a uh, uh, humpback deformity, then we start to find the role of cortical cancellous bone and a, a volar approach. Whether using stretch of either distal radius or iliac crest, so-called Rusi graft, or uh, a wedge graft taken from the distal radius uh, will uh, achieve this uh, reasonably well. Realize that in these uh, 
to form non-unions, they may be, uh, as described by Stephen Viegas, a volar type or a dorsal type. So it may be uh, different, and that's why CT, as Dr. Blazer said, is critical in analyzing these. The advantage of this is that you not only are restoring the anatomy, but hopefully realigning the carpal un, uh, kinematics and maybe slowing down the progression for osteoarthritis. Uh, the standard approach in many books has you paralleling the flexocarpi radialis and cutting straight across the volar radio scaphocapitate ligaments. But in trying to avoid that, Mark Garciolaitis came up with this idea of creating two flaps. And then by doing this and closing them in sort of a Z-plasty fashion, you may have uh, less traumatic injury to those ligaments. So here's a uh, uh, volar type uh, classic uh, uh, deformed non-union and taking out the uh, de deformity and uh, creating a, a, a space as Kyle Bekel talked about uh, for the graft is, is uh, paramount in getting length and stability. And I agree, it's not absolutely necessary always to use uh, headless screws. Uh, K-wires can be very effective uh, uh, in, in these cases, but the, once you've got this structural graft, uh, it may be very uh, s stable. This is a, a case, you see this uh, type of non-union and opening this up and creating a, a big void, decorticating both edges so that there's healthy uh, surfaces and reducing it by extension, ulnar deviation, and bear in mind that there may be a rotational deformity of the distal half. So sometimes you need to do a rotational control, placing the graft and here's your uh, K wire uh, and then headless screw. And a final case with a carpal uh, instability pattern, uh, the volar approach uh, here, again, decorticating, opening up and realigning the distal half uh, and placing a, a wedge graft in, uh, which is a fairly uh, robust uh, amount of bone, uh, headless screw, and then a careful repair of the uh, volar carpal ligaments and here the realignment of uh, the carpal uh, uh, situation as well. So if we look at the best evidence in the literature, both wedge structural graph and non-structural graph, both are reproducible with evident, moderate evidence, uh, good outcomes. And it doesn't appear to have a difference in the union rate between the two graphs types. Structural graphs will help you correct the carpal malalignment better than the non-structural graphs and maybe uh, associated with the better functional, although the evidence is low. But long-term findings suggest neither uh, these approaches will prevent OA, but may slow it down. In my experience, 90% of cases, including those with so-called scant bleeding points, have healed with interpositional graft uh, and stable internal fixation putting it only about 10% that require a revascularization procedure. And especially as Dr. Blazer pointed out, bone vascularity has not really been identified very well in uh, clinical reports. And it's very hard to really appreciate the effectiveness of vascularized graft compared to conventional techniques. Thank you.